שלום ובוקר טוב חברים, <coughs> חברים, סליחה. Uh, שלום and peace and good morning, uh, my friends. Uh, סליחה means uh, pardon me or excuse me, I mispronounced the word friends there for a second, so I wanted to correct that. Uh, <coughs> today's uh, message that I'm going to be speaking to you is something that I'm sure Brother Jason uh, will be excited to hear this message. He's asked me many times in, uh, to speak on Romans chapter 11. And uh, so it's, it's to Brother Jason, uh, we can thank for inspiring me to come back and visit this book in, 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 uh, that was written by Paul, uh, as well as uh, some other things I'm going to share with you. Uh, I, 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 I actually, though, when I started, I, I began to read the early this morning. Uh, I got up around 6 o'clock this morning and I started reading and studying, going back, reviewing this and reviewing the, the Tanakh. But I started in chapter 9. And uh, I think good, for a good reason. I believe that believe the Lord wanted you to know some things that I didn't even know at the time. Uh, one thing I'd like to share with you, though, and, and this was a little something, a little side note, but I figured I'd go ahead and share this with you so I don't forget about it myself. Revelation, by the way, comes, as many of you know, it comes by inspiration. Revelation is not, um, Revelation can be forgotten. People may not realize that, but you have to understand, in your head, when God reveals something, He reveals it to the Spirit of God that is inside of your heart. It's not revealed in your head. But what happens is that Revelation passes your mind and because it passes your mind, you tend to remember bits and pieces of the revelation and then meditating upon that revelation or, or, or the information or the word of God that, that, was, that inspired that revelation brings that back up to your mind. Now, that's how revelation works. Now, if it's something that you can just always remember, it's no big deal. And uh, um, you may have just gotten something through intellect, but revelation is different. Many times myself, in fact, recently I was listening to when I was speaking with Brother Paul Begley about uh, the story of Dina, and I had totally forgotten about that. In fact, I couldn't remember the revelation on it. I was having to watch again myself to see what was said. I didn't know. I didn't remember. Uh, but, of course, if you get a good memory and you speak about the revelation enough, then eventually it does sink into your mind, your intellect, and you're able to, to remember those things. Uh, but anyway, what I wanted to share with you before going into the book of Romans here, and this is something maybe many people already know anyway, but uh, I had never quite got this before. And that was about uh, the manna that was rained down for the Jewish people during the Exodus, how the manna came down from heaven and they ate this bread, uh, which is uh, the bread of life. It was uh, a type of Yeshua. And, uh, and beautifully, we know Yeshua says, uh, you know, I am that bread that came down. Uh, he said, I'm that bread. <clears throat> and it's ironic, though, that he says this, because what really caught my attention when Yeshua says this is I went back and I, or actually, I, the revelation just came to me right there as I read his words, because I was reading over in, um, I forget which book that was this morning, where he speaks about that. And I realized then that that manna coming out of heaven was a sign to the Jewish people that Messiah would come from heaven, that the bread of life would come from heaven, also like the, the water that comes from the rock, that showed that God would in tabernacle, the very life, the tree of life that was in the Garden of Eden would be in tabernacle in a rock. But the rock, we know, is God. According to David and Isaiah, both written in the, in the, in the Tanakh, <clears throat> they both record that yod he vav he hashem is that rock, or was upon that rock. Or The reason why we see in the, in the Tanakh that it says, upon the rock, in other words, the fullness of who God is would be upon the rock, would be in the rock. The Eitz Chaim, the tree of life, that water. I wonder why when we read in Genesis that the river that come from Eden watered the garden that was in Eden. It always just to kind of stumble me. I mean, how can something come out of something that's and water something that's in something? Well, how could Eden be in the garden of Eden if 
the water is coming out of it. That sounds kind of confusing, right? It's multidimensional. In other words, the water that come out of Eden, showing that the water flows from God. It was a type of the Spirit of God. And that's why when the rock was smitten in the wilderness journey, the water come from the rock. Where was that water coming from? It's another dimension. It wasn't a hole in the ground. It's another dimension. It was showing that the bread that come down out of heaven was showing which means how God, where God would bring that staff of life. Where the water would come from, would come from another dimension. That God himself would come and become a rock. He would become flesh upon the earth. He would be the bread of life. And we would live by that bread. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. So, all right, God bless you. Let's get right into to this message here. I'm going to dim one of these lights here off to my side there. It's heating up my face like an oven. <laughs> so, turn that one off. Uh, Romans chapter 9. Let's kind of look through, through here. Some very fascinating things here. Uh, I'm just going to read a couple of verses here to get it started here. Uh, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, conscience, uh, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. What a love Paul had for the Jewish people. It, it, it sorrowed him so greatly to see them not able to believe. That, to the point that he wished that he was accursed. He, he, in other words, he wished he had been blinded as they were. That's how much love he had for his people. And I can understand what he means by that. I do. Who are Israelites to whom pertain at the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. All right. Now we get right into the heart of the matter. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Hmm. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That's interesting that he brings up that part about Isaac. In Isaac shall, shall thy seed be called. Um, you know... Why does God take and bring the seed through Isaac? It's interesting that God, you know, the, the Jewish people always said, our father is Abraham, our father is Abraham. And that's true. They were descendants of Abraham, no doubt about it. But why is it that the seed comes through Isaac? Well, we know that Abraham has two sons. He has Ishmael and he has Isaac. And of course, Ishmael's descendants are not the promise. They're not, they're not where the promise is. God chose Isaac for a reason. You know, as we know, the, the reason for the name Isaac, Yitzhak in Hebrew, Yitzhak. Yitzhak means he laughs. What we would consider to be a joke would be the way that God would come. And it's so true. If you're thinking, you look at the scriptures, what, what does it say in Mark 5.40? When Yeshua comes and he talks about the damsel that's dead, and he says she only sleeps, she's not dead. And the scripture says they laughed him to scorn. So he had to put them all out of the house. And he only brought the ones that believed into the home before praying for the child. Everything was a joke to them. And that's the whole thing. You know, it's just like with Mary. No one wanted to believe that she conceived, that she was a virgin. It's just a joke. So, and of course, this was the whole thing about Abraham and Sarah. Abraham thought it was funny. In fact, it's the very fact that Abraham thought it was funny that proves that it would come down through his descendants. If Abraham laughed about it, then his children would laugh as well when the promised son came. Now, once Abraham got the son, it was no more a laughing matter. It was now a fulfillment. 
Let's continue on then. <clears throat> that that uh, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, and not of works, but of him that calleth. Mm. You know, it's amazing that the types that we have here, um, that just lay here in the word, just totally amazing to me. Uh, it was said of her, unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written. Let me just read a little bit more of this. Written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there for unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now, a lot of times people, they... And this is this was something new to me, and it's funny because even as I go back, I had to make myself notes because I'd already forgotten what God had revealed to my heart about this right here. When he speaks right here, notice right here, it was said, verse 12, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Jacob and Esau. Now, we are in a modern era, and this is prophesied of our day it's not proper it wasn't speaking back you know what oh gosh i can't even tell you how many thousands of years ago that this took place here it wasn't speaking back then this is this that was nearly four thousand years ago he's not talking about them i mean it's true esau served jacob But, he's not speaking of them. Paul is not even speaking of the hour he's living in. Although it did reflect even at that time as well. What is Paul speaking of? The elder. When he quotes, the, he's, quoting, he's quoting the prophecy here. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. In modern days, Esau is the Vatican. I mean, the sages even note this. When I say sages, for those that may not understand, Jewish people would understand that the sages are the rabbinical fathers down through the ages that wrote the Mishnah, the Midrash, uh, the Talmud, uh, both the Babylonian and the, and, the, and the Jerusalem Talmuds. They knew that the descendants of Esau later become the Romans. And they also know that those descendants eventually became Americans. No, no, it doesn't mean every American. America is made up of all kinds of nations. What do they mean by the Vatican would end up taking over this country as well? Why do you think Putin, and excuse me, not Putin, but why do you think Barack Obama is ready to send troops right now? That's just breaking news today, by the way. We'll be speaking about it later tonight on Israel Live. But that is information that's coming out right now. Barack Obama is ready to send troops over into uh, Ukraine. Obey, boy. Obey. Bow yourself down to the Pope. That's exactly what you're doing. Just bow yourself down. So, the elder shall serve the younger. I have to be careful. I had a volume on another computer here. I didn't realize the volume was on. Let me just mute that. So, so the elder serves the younger. The, the point is, Esau is the elder. And eventually, they're going to serve Israel. What shall we say then? Is there ungodliness with God? God forbid, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not him that, that willeth, nor him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. For, this, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power unto thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. 
the Pope today is the modern day Pharaoh of today. And right now, the children of Israel are going into bondage by signing this covenant with the Vatican. But God is going to deliver us. This is the time of deliverance, though. And this is where God will make that elder serve the younger. So it's, 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 a, it's an amazing, uh, amazing what God, is, what God is doing right now. Uh, reading on down, verse 18. Therefore, have, uh, therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will harden, uh, uh, whom he will harden. Thou, though, thou will say then, unto me, why doth he yet find fault for who has resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel into honor and another into dishonor? You know, this, the whole thing is everything is God. Now, the thing is, is each individual, you have the right to choose which way you're going to serve God. You have a right to either believe him or not believe him. But the thing is, is God knows how to make the vessel to fit because God knew from the beginning which way you would choose. It's not his will that any should perish, that is true. But he knows because he's infinite. He's a God that knoweth all things beforehand. And he's long-suffering, that not that any should perish. But no matter what he does, he knows that as much as he reaches out and tries to get the people to believe him, they're still not going to do it. There's some that just won't. So he's molded and made us to fit that image that he knew that was in us. Let's go, uh, verse 23, maybe, maybe I already read this, let's get, look at this. And, and, and that he might make known the riches of his glory, yes, and the vessels of his mercy, which he had afore prepared into glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Okay. Showing how the gospel goes to both. As he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. Prophecy that the Gentiles would end up believing the gospel. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there shall there be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And yes, that's that. Let me just, let me read something to you on this right here. Uh, Paul was taking this from Isaiah 28. And I want to share with you, because there are some things as I begin to look at these things that just really took me by surprise. Um, so I'm going to read to you a little bit more than just what Paul is speaking about here. Now, um, he looks at it from verse 22. Let me just take you there first. That he may do his work... Um, now you got to keep in mind, I'm reading this from a Jewish Bible, so the translation will be a little different, and the verse may be a little off from what you're used to there, so just keep that in mind. Uh, that he may do his work, uh, though strange be his work, and bring to pass his act, though strange be his act. Now therefore be not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord of hosts that destruction is decreed upon the whole land. See, now what Paul quotes it here, um, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Let's, let's, take a, let's read this once more here. I'll, I really want you to catch something here. Because uh, when, Paul, when Paul is writing about this in Romans, he gives you a, a short little verse here there uh, that he reflects back onto in another part of the Tanakh. 
But uh, I would go back and I would read more of the scripture just to see if there's anything else that applied. And that's what really began to bless my heart there. So in verse 27, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. So we know that he's speaking of Isaiah, uh, Yeshayahu. Uh, uh, crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Okay. And excuse me, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Hmm. Cuts it short. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Now, he gives us a couple of different references for this. He gives Isaiah 10, 23, being one, and, and Isaiah 28, 22. Now, Isaiah 28, 22 is very, very interesting. Um... Now, when I went back and I looked at what he's saying, especially the latter part in verse 28, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Now, <clears throat> he's taken Isaiah 28, 22 for this. And let me just read that to you real quick, and then we're going to back up a little bit into Isaiah here. Uh, that he may do his work, though strange be his work, and bring to pass his act, though strange be his act. Now therefore, be not mockers, lest your bands be made strong, for I have heard from the Lord God of hosts that destruction is decreed upon the whole land. This is why the, the work is going to be short. This is why he cuts it short. It's because there's destruction coming. And he tells them, you know, d don't be mockers. Don't mock this time around here, lest your bands be made strong. In other words, your, your blindness, your bondage will be worse if you mock now. Okay? Now, let's back up, though, a little bit in Isaiah 28. And this is what I found fascinating here. Go to verse... Um, 14. Now, of course, we know, I, I know right above that, we have with stammering lips and other tongues shall I speak to this people. That applied to when Yeshua come the first time. But I want you to notice verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, scornful men that rule this people, which is in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol. Are we at agreement? Hmm. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come to us. We have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Isn't that interesting? Made a covenant with death and with Sheol. Do you realize this is a prophecy? that is speaking about the covenant that's about to be signed today. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, scornful men, mostly our politicians in Israel, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death. Doesn't the scripture say somewhere in there that uh, that all, all the slain and the dead were found in her? I think that's in Revelation. I know I'm not quoting that exactly right, but uh, the blood of all the martyrs, the saints were found in her. You're making a covenant with death. Doesn't it also say that they garnished the tombs, but they're the ones that put them in there? There's your grave. Anyway. For we have made lies our refuge under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Yeah, you've lied to the people. Talking about Shimon Perez and all the other politicians that are part of this covenant. Under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And, and you think that when destruction comes to Israel, God, when I say destruction will come, they will not destroy. God will deliver the remnant. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. That was Yeshua. And it's not two stones to make the corner either, nor is it three. It's just one stone. A sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste judgment. Also will I lay by a line a righteous by a plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters shall overflow the hiding place, and your covenant with death shall be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol shall not stand. Didn't Daniel prophesy that the covenant would be broken in the midst of the week? It's interesting how God annuls it. It's like a marriage. See? You go marry the devil. And a marriage can be annulled if it's not consummated. It's undoubtedly, there won't be a consummation. I just want to bring that out to you. That, I thought that was fascinating because it's being all kind of lumped together. Uh, the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then you shall be trodden down by it. As often as it goes forth, it shall take you. From morning by morning shall it pass over by day by night, and the mere understanding of the report shall bring terror. For the bed is too short for a man to stretch himself, and the covering too narrow for him to wrap himself up. The Lord shall rise up as in a Mount uh, Perizim. He shall be full of anger as in the valley of Givon, that he may do his work, though strange be his work and bring to pass his act, though strange be his act. See? Now therefore be not mockers, lest your bonds be made strong, for I have heard from the Lord God the host that destruction is decreed upon the whole land. Give ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Does the plowman all day plow to sow, open and harrow his ground? When he has prepared a smooth surface, does he not Scatter the black seeds and cast the cumin. Throw it. Throw the wheat by rows and the barley in the marked spot and spelt in the, in the prescribed. And God instructs him, for the black seeds are not threshed with a threshing instrument. Fascinating. Fascinating to say the very least. Let's get back to Romans. We're in chapter 9, verse 29. And Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. See, this time the seed will not be crushed. It won't be crushed. He'll bring forth the crop. He will bring forth that remnant that was sown. Verse 30. What shall we say then that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. See? He comes twice. As it was written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, I want to read to you this from Isaiah. It's in chapter 8. Um, and he shall... And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense, to both the houses of Israel. Now that's interesting, because you have to remember, the house of Israel was not there. Only the house of Judah. So, it does have a compound fulfillment. Hmm. Notice, though, what he says, though, in the next verse or the next part of the sentence, for a trap and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. You see, what, you see how he separates that though, Isaiah? Isaiah knows that the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which was only the house of Judah, and a lot of times the house of Judah is also called you know, the house of Jerusalem or Jerusalem. They're referred to that way there because the, the kingdom of David, when it was divided, 
uh, the, the house of Judah was considered the house of David, uh, also uh, Jerusalem, because they were in Jerusalem is where they were at. They were the inhabitants thereof. But it will have that compound fulfillment showing that when all the tribes are back, because the remaining tribes, the house of Israel, will return in during the time. Some have already started returning, but for the most part, they, were, they will return during the last seven years of Daniel's 70th week. So it clearly shows that not all of them will believe. And it's just a, a, a very interesting insight there.